so um, You're ready, Chef? Yes. Okay. Is this the first time you've seen Polish? No. No, I've been uh, three times. Three times? Yes, yeah, so I've been the first time in uh, the Ruffles, uh, I don't know, 15 years ago, maybe. And after I've been at the Woodwood Park for some six, seven years ago. So we shall begin now. Yes. Okay. One, two, and three. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to the Steinberg Review. Uh, today we have a very distinguished uh, Michelin star chef. Uh, he has two stars on his belt, and he owns uh, uh, the restaurant. No, oh, not oh, sorry. Yes, I want to. That's right. Sorry. Take two. Sorry. Hi, welcome to the National Quiz Choice Online News. Uh, I'm Robin Steinberg, and welcome to the Steinberg Review. Uh, we have a special guest with me today. And it's none other than Chef uh, André uh, Caril, and he is based in France. And he's going to tell us more about his life uh, being a chef and how he has uh, achieved uh, one of the best uh, restaurants uh, in the world in, in France. Uh, chef uh, André, um, thank you for coming to our show and uh, welcome back to Singapore once again. And, thank you. And Chef uh, André, tell us, you know, um, uh, how did you uh, manage uh, you know, to achieve uh, you know, your status as a, as a dude which is not chef. <coughs> That's a family story, you know, because my grandfather started uh, in 1945 to create his restaurant called Oustre de Manière in Le and he became uh, uh, famous because he got uh, one star in 1949, two star in 52, and three star in 54. And so when he, he was becoming old, so he asked me to join him, to take over. And so I, I came in 69, so it's at his place, that's uh, almost 44 years now. And so I started cooking with him, and, uh, and so that's uh, just a family business, so you know, uh, I go on and go on and go on. So. Hmm. And so when my grandfather died uh, in 19, about 20 years ago, yes, 1993, so we lost the third star because uh, they, they, they thought that he was attached to him and not to me, and so since we have two stars, and so we are, I go on every day. But having to carry on the legacy, uh, many of would like to ask, what is your philosophy of food? I mean, you have been doing this for 44 years now. Yes. And and uh, what made you or, or caused you to make a decision that this is the life that you want to be? Uh, for a different reason. Uh, because uh, 
what I like in sense to create. Uh, create, I mean, <coughs> not only dishes, but create uh, also places and new restaurants have been have a vineyard also, and uh, so you know, to, to just to give life to, to, to different places. That's very important for me. And cooking was one one way of uh, doing that. You know, create something. And uh, for example, I don't like what's uh, accounting and so on. You know, it's, uh, for me it's boring. So what I like realize that's entrepreneur. I mean, so just do the things and and build something and create something. And that's very important for me. And so my philosophy of cooking is uh, simple simple but good, you know, I mean, so uh, I try to get more fresh products, so I have my own organic vegetable garden, uh, so I have a menu, vegetable menu, since I went one of the first in France to have just vegetable menu, and uh, I grow my own vegetable as I told you, and so, so, so to keep the, the real taste of the product, which is very important for me, so to be classic, but modern also, so I'm not cooking like I used to cook 30 years ago. So it changed because life changed, because uh, we are more concerned by how health and so on. And, but uh, trying to be simple, good, fresh, and uh, so. <laughs> so you prefer to use organic uh, vegetables? Yes, and because healthy. I'm doing organic wine also, so that's also. why I do the same for a period of few years. Oh, so you have a vineyard? Yes, I have you a vineyard. Know, so you're growing organic wines? Yes. And now why do you choose to grow organic food and organic wine? Because that's, uh, that's my way of thinking. I think it's good for the, for the health, I think it's good for the earth, I think it's good for our children, I think, uh, you know, so when you, it's the same with making wine or, or cooking, you know, so, uh, so you have to get the best products, you know, if the products are not good, you can't make a good cuisine. And if your uh, grapes are not good, uh, you can't make good wines also. You, know, you can make something very technologic, but which is not the expression of the soil. And you know, so you have so many wines in the, in, in the world, so and what's difficult is that to have wines where we reflect the area where they're coming from, you know, which is not just technology because when you taste the wine you don't know if you are in South Africa, South America, uh, Chile, or if you are in, in uh, Asia, or I mean, in France, in which part, in Europe, and so And the wine, have, and you have to express, you know, the, the area, the soil where it's coming from. That's very important for me. And the organic culture, you know, is, gives you possibility to, to have more uh, identity. And, uh, and what is your identity as a chef today than what it used to be 44 years ago? Hmm. What's the difference now? So I'm getting older, so I've done a lot, you know, I've been cooking, uh, make some demonstration all over the world. So the more I'm getting older, the more I like to think simple, you know, and so, and so I try to be real, uh, to, to, to express the, the, the product, you know, what uh, so if I do something is should be a, should be a product and product and product. Hmm. So authentic, authentic and traditional. Yes, yes. yes. Now, now, what's your secret of maintaining the getting the two Michelin star status? Was it by accident or was it because you? No, you, you know, I tried to get the third star, but again, but. Uh, so, you know... Is that important? For the business, yes, it's important because it gives you more business. But what's important is uh, really that you like what you're doing. And what's important is the, is the quality, you know. So, always the quality. For getting the quality, so you have the best product. You have to have the... the La rigueur, I don't know how to say rigueur in English, rigorous, I mean, so you know that the cooking has to be right, not overcooked, not undercooked, just perfect. And and everything should be uh, very, very uh, rigoureux, we say in France, I don't know what's the name in English, that's meant, that's, uh, 
It's not uh, something, you know, a peu près so that. Mm. It has mm. to be done right. Yes. And so, another question is that, um, what is, you know, your, your criteria, you know, uh, in choosing the, the right, uh, the right produce as well as choosing your right chefs to work with you, mm. you know, uh, what would be your, your, your criteria? Because you, you, you mentioned about quality, and you're particularly about quality. Yes, I'm very fond of quality. Because uh, so the products, you know, you know that uh, the that, uh, that freshness, for example, and, uh, and, uh, and the, the area where they're coming from, you know, that uh, you have to have the, the contact with the, with the producer, you know, the people who are growing the, the herbs or the vegetable or of, uh, so, or is the fish, when you're getting the fish, you know, where you buy the fish, where the fish is coming from, and, and so how long does it last from the moment who has been uh, fished to the moment who is coming to your plate, so that's very important. And so for the chefs who are working with me, it's the same thing, so they have to be passionate, they have to, to love what they're doing, they don't have to care about the others of what they do, and and just and, and this was important is sensibility, you know, because um, when you work in the kitchen, so you don't work. If you, for example, are cooking a, a red mallet, it's not the same like if you're cooking a, a turbot or a sea bass. And some people feel that, you know, that there's a difference and they have this sensibility, and some people don't. So the feel, the feel. Hmm. Now, what's your most memorable experience when you first started out as a chef 44 years ago? Uh, what would be the most memorable experience for you uh, growing up as a chef and growing up with your family? Oh. So, it's a very different uh, moment. So, when, you know, we're, we're famous restaurants, so we have received all the world, you know, so singers, uh, Prince, uh, the Queen of England, Ten Xiaoping, I don't know, so many, many people. Very famous and why not? So it's always memorable, you know, when you have uh, the Queen of England coming to your restaurant. That's something. Uh, it doesn't happen every day. So, but there's something for me which was very memorable. Also, was when I was cooking at uh, uh, making a demonstration in Japan in Tokyo at the uh, Atari Cooking School. You know, when I saw you know hundred Japanese faces looking at you and you know. So when you are in, in the kitchen, you can always ask for help. So when when you are alone, in front of all these 121 or 50, I don't remember how many they were, and uh, so you know you have missing in your <laughs> so you have just your two hands, and uh, uh, it's uh, so it's always. Uh, but, but, you, but you can't speak Japanese anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> no. So now, speaking of which, when you travel overseas, uh, cooking for for different uh, hotels and, and mm. organizations, uh, do you have all problems with adapting to cultures, different cultures, different language? Not very much. Yes, uh, I've been cooking in Japan a lot, and. Uh, uh, so I think, uh, well, at the beginning, yes, uh, yes, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, it was a bit difficult uh, and to have uh, somebody with me all day, you know, next to me to say, give me the, the white wine, give me the red wine, give me salt, give me pepper, give me something, because when you don't speak it, uh, and people were not used at this time to the French cooking, so now we have changed, so it's much easier. But, uh, so you're cooking the way you, you like, you know, so you're not cooking for Japanese or for uh, Chinese or for Americans, so you're cooking the way you feel, you know, so, you know, for example, Japanese don't like too much salt, but, so, you know, you don't, uh, you, know, you cook like you usually cook. No, Chef, uh, what sort of ingredients do you usually love to use, back in France? I like, I love vegetable, old vegetable, and uh, I like also the fishes more than meat, and, uh, and uh, so when 
I eat hummus, I eat uh, also, I like pasta also. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like your pasta done? Is it the way the Italians do it? <laughs> no, I like it. I like the Italian did, you know, so it's not overcooked and uh, with the sauce and I don't care because you can make all the sauce you want to change. Hmm. No, wait, wait, so, so, speaking of which, uh, what would be the most memorable uh, experience when you grew up, when you were growing up with your grandfather, mm. you know, and your father? Mm. Uh, was there a uh, one dish that they ask you to learn before you achieve the next step in the process of becoming a chef? No, 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 no. They don't have that system. No, no, it doesn't have this system. So you just jump into it and so, and so after you. <laughs> what sort of processes uh, have you uh, adopted uh, right now today in training your chefs and you know, uh, to become the, the next generation of executive chefs or the chin star chefs. Mm -hmm. No, they have to be. Uh, you know, I said you know you have to have the, the, this feeling, which is very important for me, because some people they, they work very hard, they are very good technicians, but they never do good. You know, and some yeah, some people, even if they they don't have any technique, what they're doing is always good. And some people they never is never good. Uh, you know, it's not a question the way you you. you uh, I mean, the technique is important, of course, but uh, but sense, uh, sensitivity, creation, it's why it's for me is more important. Be, okay, being creative, uh, that you say that's that's most important. Is it in the culture of the French uh, to continuously, you know, innovate and be creative? Yes. Uh, always. Cooking is always that's not so you in French cooking history people are always import you know ideas from from all the world mm -hmm. but after they, they they digest it and so they recreate again so it has been always working like no no now let's come to, um, and move forward mm -hmm. what is the future of cuisine then because you spoke about traditional mm -hmm. of cuisine and then also we're not touch on the future of the fusion cuisine. Mm. Um, I know that you may not be in favor because no. you, you believe in, in organic and traditional cooking. Yes. But what do you see in the future of the cuisine? Do you f see that, uh, uh, that the trend is changing and future chefs are going to adopt fusion uh, cooking? No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. the future is fusion. I think, you know, so you, we always in France have taken from outside, you know, some ingredients or some ideas, some way of cooking. And, but after we, we adapted to our way of uh, thinking and uh, of living, and so I don't think it will change very much. Have you ever, have you ever faced uh, 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 most, uh, the most uh, you know, uh, embarrassing moment in your life as a chef where some of your dishes were not uh, pleasing to your VIP clients. Yeah. I mean, have you failed before? Yes, okay. it happened. Yeah. It happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, so how do you how do you overcome embarrassment and failures in life? So you don't feel good, and uh, so you ask yourself why, and so uh, you sometimes you say yes, you were wrong, or you didn't do the thing well, or, or sometimes you don't understand why. That uh, seems everything seems to be. Like it should be, and so, but you know, it's very difficult. Very difficult because it depends not only what you're doing, but it depends on the way the people who are eating, you know, with whom they're sitting, uh, with their love, with not somebody they don't like. If it's too hot, if it's uh, sweating, if they have a bad trip, it's so, you know, so, 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 so many influence on the, on the way of, uh, of their mood, and the mood is very important. Now, what sort of challenges did you face as a chef uh, in workplace uh, uh, work and, and family uh, life balance? Because I know that being a chef, I was told that it is long hours yes. and you have to work on days where people are having a good time but you're not having a good time. Yes. Um, so, so, so you have to accept it. <laughs> and so, uh, but. And your wife has to accept it also. But, but, but before she became your wife, you had a girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, so how do you how did you manage to 
to balance the work-life balance? Do you have to explain to them, be, be truthful about the, the, the situation? No, maybe, well, they accept it, you know, they see how you work, you know. I'm, I'm working seven days a week, I never stop, never go on vacation, so... Or my wife accepts it, or she doesn't, so she doesn't, so we have to, to, to divorce. So, that's no way, I mean, so, you know, that's a, that's a very difficult job, so. The balance, uh, so, you know, some chefs are having a few times free, or some, some you know, very different, every, every one to do, as lucky he, he may. <laughs> it's not so easy. What okay. Would, what, 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 so, before, Chef, before we let you go, yes. what, what, what would be your one wish that you have in mind that you wish to do? I mean, now you have come this far, 44 years. So, I like to go on. I still want to, to make Bumania in you know, my restaurant more um, well known, more, more uh, uh, nice. and. Uh, and the food is always better, so there is no other way. So I have a daughter, so I hope she may, she's 30 years old, so one of my wish will be that she will take over. I mean, yeah? Yes. So. Is there one country that you have not been to so far in the world? Uh, yes, uh, I haven't been in China yet. Oh, you I'm, haven't? I'm going next week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, oh, I, I haven't been in South, Africa, uh, South America. No, oh, South America. Yeah, I've been in Chile, I've been in Brazil, but I haven't been in Argentina or China. Yeah. Oh, so that'll be your next stop, I suppose. I don't know. Will you so be Will you be publishing your own biography in the future, or? Yes, I'm. I'm working on a new book. Yes. Amazing. Yes, I've done five, but this one will be more like a story book with recipes. Will you Will you do a cooking uh, cooking show sometime in the future? I don't know. Yet. <laughs> that's that's the forecast. But before uh, before yes, we read, to live now, yeah. yes. But before that, what would be your three key advice for future uh, sh executive chefs in terms of leadership? What would be, what would be your advice for them to know and how to lead a team uh, of, of chefs? Hmm. Yeah. It's not so easy, you know. So that's a question of uh, also feeling. So to be so. You, you have to give the example, you know, so for me it's what's very important. So if you give example, you know, if you're working hard, so people will work hard. If you work well, if you are rigorous, if you are very pointy, you, I mean, so you, 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 you don't let the thing go in the, the wrong direction. So after people follow you, that's uh, just, uh, I, I believe in the, in the, the strength of the, of the example. And one last question. If you, if you were to, if you were to, you know, leave this earth today, mm. what would be the one life, uh, one life uh, advice, like life experience advice, would you give to the young people, the next generation? Mm -hmm. Just do what you uh, what you love, um, <laughs> and uh, so if you love cooking, cook, and uh, I don't worry about what people say. You know, so life is very short, goes so fast, so you have to do what you want. You know, so I think it's very important just to just to decide to go and don't take care about what people say. So you do what you have to do. Once again, thank you, Chef, for joining us, much. and it's been a real, real pleasure. Thank and you. thank you for joining me at, at the National Field's Choice, uh, Robin Steinberg, the Steinberg Review Show. Uh, and uh, please do look out for Chef Andre uh, uh, Charel up over in France, and do pay, pay a visit at the restaurant. And you never know, you might get a surprise. Once again, I'm Robin Steinberg, have a good week ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Let me call it. Let me call yes, it. Oh, uh, yes, so sorry, thank you.